Okay. So in the thick of 2020, Envision Utah um, reached out to us about creating a video with them about Utah's air quality. And we live here in Utah, and I learned so much about Utah's air quality while making this video, and it was a lot of fun. But when we kind of started in the process of making this video for them, the first thing I did was a lot of research. They sent me all their branding, the web stuff that they were working on, getting ready for lunch, and I noticed that there was a lot of iconography, a lot of icons that they were using to tell stories and give um, like give ideas and tell facts and things and they had a script already mostly written and they just did some fine tuning while we were in this process but when I read their script there was a lot of very factual based um, things that we were going to be explaining in the video and so what we decided to do was use all of this icon iconography in their branding. They already had all of these illustrations, icon illustrations, um, drawn out and available. So we used a lot of them and then of course found some supplementary icons and we built a storyboard using icons with the intent to cut them out of paper to make this video. <laughs> One of my friends who watched the animation said, Trish, this was all done digitally. And I'm like, no, no, no. This entire video was made out of paper other than two pieces. So the very first kind of digital piece was the clouds. Um, so the clouds were um, put in digitally to turn gray to white. And then at the very end, there's a little logo in the corner. Those are the only two digital pieces in the whole film and everything else is paper. Um, so after we put together this kind of like shot list storyboard of all the things, it got time to start cutting out paper and we cut out a ton of paper. <laughs> Tons of paper. We cut it all out on the Glowforge. So we sourced the icons from their illustration library and then for anything else that we needed, I just purchased um, icons that would work for the video. And there was like some icon libraries that you can subscribe to for commercial use. And so I subscribed to a bunch of icon libraries, downloaded things like trees, houses, furnaces, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then we started cutting everything on the Glowforge, which I mean, cut these things like a champion. <laughs> And my little sister was um, interning with us at the time and she cut out, her name is Kimberly, she cut out so much paper. So huge props to Kimberly, who's probably watching this video. Love you, thank you for cutting out all this paper. <laughs> so every piece is, has a blue outline to kind of give it that icon, that like classic icon look. But then also we backed everything in that dark blue as well um, so that all these pieces had a place to live. So there's multiple layers of paper for every illustration. Um, so it's, you know, blue, dark blue, red, pink, light blue. And then the wheels, these have been attached with brads. On the back, you can see the brads. Um, so that these can move. And one of the things we um, made sure we did when we were creating these assets is give these wheels a break so that when it moves, you can tell it moves because if this didn't exist, it would be really hard visually to tell it was moving. So all the wheels that we're gonna move have this little break in them. Okay, what else can I tell you? There's a lot. Um, cut everything on the Glowforge, assembled it in multi-pieces. We also used, let me show you, one of my favorite things use in the studio um, when we're doing so much paperwork like this. <laughs> These blue syringes. So we put glue in the syringe and then it just comes out the tip and we can do fine lines like, <laughs> like in this, you know, having to glue that down is super tricky, but when you have a glue syringe, it becomes a lot easier. Um, so we spent days, days and days and days paper cutting and assembling and preparation for filming. And then filming took a course of multiple days as well. Um, so let me kind of just break down a couple scenes for you. So one of the first scenes um, in the video after our big Salt Lake scene, we'll talk about Salt Lake last because we filmed it last and it was a beast. Um, but one of the first scenes is this um, kind of like we populate the scene with people, 
we zoom out and see that it is Utah. And the voiceover for that part um, talks about our population growing fast, where's this pollution coming from? Short answer, all of us. And so we wanted to kind of populate with individuals and then pull back and show that the pop, the pollution comes from everyone. And so we created, this is me, little person. We created all these little paper icon people, like a ton of them, like a ton of them. This took, this, cutting out these paper people on their own just took a lot of time, but also really fun. I love doing tasks like this where you're, it's basically like putting together a puzzle. Where did that person's face go? And where's that person's hair? And then gluing them all together, which is really fun. Um, so what we wanted to do in the animation was have the people kind of like crinkle into being and then pop up towards the frame. And then we would zoom out. Um, the zoom is just a digital zoom. And so we didn't actually practically shoot a lens moving um, because we wanted to do this backwards and it was gonna work great. So we just did the zoom digitally. I had this idea <clears throat> to make animation easier on myself by cutting wooden blocks that were easily stackable but that would magnet to each other. <coughs> and they just stick. It's so convenient. Um, a lot of times when I wanna give depth to something in a scene, what I'll do is use these wooden blocks, but I'll just like double stick tape them together. But what it ends up being is a lot of work to tape things to the height that you want them, and then a ton of work and cleanup to take off all the double-sided tape, throw it in the garbage, and then put the blocks back away. So I wanted to do something that was just gonna be a little bit easier. So on the Glowforge, we cut these, and um, we cut these little holes that would fit these magnets. Well, and made these blocks. And we used these in multiple scenarios to give depth to pieces in the scene. So a lot of times what I would do is I would tape a magnet to here and then that magnet would just rest on these blocks. And so then I could change the depth of the piece really easily by changing which wood block was magneted to the paper if that makes any sense. <laughs> um, another thing is the bicycle guy. So twice during the video, you see there's a bicyclist come through. And in order to get his legs to move and the wheels to move, uh, we had to do some tricky stuff. So instead of creating a paper piece, like, so many paper pieces that I could replay, do replacement animation for the legs moving and the wheels moving, it would have been a lot. So what I did instead was created four, um, four guys. So in every single one of these, um, his legs move, but also we created a Brad system for the wheels to move. So we only had to play the legs moving four times. And so each, Bikers' legs are in a different position, and um, I think it worked. We did a lot of testing. We actually cut out a ton of bikers to test out what looked the best. So this is our little biker and his multiple <laughs> leg motions um, to give that animated effect. And then of course, Brad's to make the tires move. The trickiest scene. Oh man, was the scene we filmed last. It was the biggest beast of a scene to film. It is the Salt Lake. Let me see, the Salt Lake. Um, big, massive paper thing. It took the entire table and it took us days to craft the paper for it. Um, and we had it all kind of like sitting out and lined up on the countertop. And what we then did is piece by piece from the bottom layer up, so from the mountains to the the kind of houses and road that's on the top layer. We built it and then gave them like wooden blocks and things so that they could sit on top of each other in terms of height. And then we took everything off. And then with those height dimensions, we just figured out and like taped to all the pieces. We then would tape them to the background so that if it got bumped or jiggled or moved that the whole city wouldn't just like fall to pieces. And so we, <laughs> 
We assembled it, we took it down. Then we reassembled it by taping it into place and then got it all ready for filming and then filmed the cars going along it and the airplane coming through and then we took it all down. <laughs> so it was a ton to do for that scene. That scene itself, just setting it up and taking it down and resetting it up and then filming probably took three days on its own, um, but it was really fun. Let's see, I think that that's all I have to tell you. If you have any questions about this video, feel free to ask them in the comments. And I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. And this is the box. This doesn't even have all the paper pieces, but it has most of the paper pieces um, from the video. There were a ton, but this box doesn't have all the really big mountain and city building pieces, but it does have all the trees and people and houses and stuff. But anyways, so that's a little behind the scenes look at how we filmed in Vision Utah, and we hope that you enjoyed kind of a peek behind the curtain and hope you have a great rest of your day. something you might not realize. Utah's air is cleaner today than it was a decade ago. That's right, we really are cleaning up Utah's air. But our population is growing fast and it's going to take work to stay on the path to cleaner air. So where's this air pollution coming from? Well, it comes from all of us. Around 40% of our pollution comes from the cars and trucks we drive. Nearly a third comes from our homes and businesses, furnaces, wood burning, even paints. 17% of emissions come from industrial sources like mining or manufacturing. And 12% comes from things like farming and construction equipment, or trains, planes, and even lawnmowers. So what can we do to cut back? First, we can focus on clean travel. Make sure you fill up at stations that offer Tier 3 gas. It makes all cars cleaner. Buying a car? Search for the best smog rating, or consider buying electric. And driving less by telecommuting, biking, or riding tracks can cut your emissions in a big way. Next, think about clean buildings, including your home. Using the best technology and good insulation can cut your emissions in half. And when you replace your water heater or furnace, look for the most efficient models or look into a heat pump. Finally, think clean tools. Running a gas-powered lawnmower or snowblower for an hour emits the same amount of pollution as driving your car 200 miles. So think about upgrading to an electric model. We're making great strides, but it will take all of us working together to enjoy cleaner air, now and in the future. See more tips and learn about Utah's air quality at youraryourutah.org. Because it's your air and it's your Utah. So let's clean it up together.